Hello, today I'm going to show you how I fit my 12 volt fridge into my camper van. The fridge I'm fitting is a Dometic CD20 drawer fridge. Now these are really good, I believe it's the Danfoss compressor in these which are designed for vehicles and they can withstand all the vibrations that you get on the road and they're also able to work at up to 30 degree tilt. Now, the temperature these knock out is between 0 and 12 degrees, I believe, and it depends on the surrounding ambient temperature. The CD30 is just slightly different and obviously 10 litres bigger than this CD20, which is just a 20 litre fridge. So my location will be under the bed. Now, the interesting thing with these drawer fridges is the fact that the compressor unit and the pipe work and everything, which is hard to see down there, all can be removed and placed up to 1.5 meters away so if you want to clear the back of your fridge area if you haven't got the depth to fit it then you can move it uh, and i could if i wanted to put it down there i want to get the fridge up and running and uh do a test today and see what sort of drawer i'm getting on it the fridge has a lockable handle you just pull it and it opens obviously this mat won't be there the power switch is there and that's shut see it's not bolted down at the moment it does come with these four brackets in the four corners and these can be up, lowered up and down just slightly because it's an, like a slot groove for them and then i'll get that fixed into the floor for power i'm actually going to fit a switch i'm going to fit a switch that will be just hidden tucked under here somewhere so that in times when i'm not using it i can just switch it off there and not have to worry about getting up to the fuse box i'm doing a temporary wiring on this to start with because I'm bound to move stuff. I'm bound to want to rearrange, not the position of the fridge, but the items and storage areas under this bed. And I don't want cables running in the way. So I'm using a variety of different clips, which I'll show you in the moment. But I do like these vice grips, this style of wire stripper. It's just a simple case of, and that's done. And then a little twist. You know, and you, that's ready to be inserted into my negative block there. Now it's just a case of connecting up the red positive cable there to my fuse block. For crimping, I like to use a set of Sealy tools. These Sealy crimps do a really good job. So I've just wired onto this old, quite bulky switch that I've got. It's only got the two wires because it doesn't have a light on the switch itself. See, it's ideally for a fan. This is a marine switch that I've had for years. But as it's going to go out of sight. Okay, so the switch is just mounted there. Again, it's temporary. because I've still got to finish these. I'll probably carpet this and this. So you can hear the compressor kick in. The efficiency of these fridges compared to the power they use, the very little power they use, is remarkable. And that's why they're so popular and uh, expensive. So quick test of the switch. Yep, it clearly goes off. And kicks back in. What I want to do is just look at what happens once I flick the switch and the fridge goes on. Let's look at the difference. Right, there we go. Compressor's kicked in. So we can see 3 amp, 3.1 amps. And let's not forget this fridge is not down to temperature. It's only been on a few moments. Um, so it was at 0 0.2 on the other way, I don't, negligible. So just over three amp draw there. 
in the description below this video and in the text accompanying my blog i will put the specific dimensions in but bear in mind that the depth can be adjusted by removing that compressor and that says as i said before it can move up to 1.5 meters away so if i wanted to i could put it down there perhaps have an air vent coming through the side here into there as well as airflow under here there'll be airflow around the back there and i can make some airflow down here as well but what it will do is take away this so that that doesn't get knocked by anything that i'm pushing in under the bed from the other side and this area is going to be very hard to access this area will be very hard to access anyway so it makes complete sense to put it there to protect it i could then fit a drop level shelf all across here so when this top piece comes off there's a small thin or shallow storage area i've just turned the switch all the way to max and the compressor is kicked straight back in let's turn the switch so the compressor's gone off there if we keep turning There, there was a little bit of resistance there, and that's the off position. There we go, on. That thermometer is used to, so I put the whole thing inside. It's showing 8.7, which might be correct, or minus one, and <laughs> certainly not minus one. One of the things before I even bought this fridge was I tested it. This is a 440 milliliter can of beer. It is has got room to fit the 500 mil, but not the pint ones. Stood up right, otherwise you'll have to lay them down long as they fit in they don't fit this side because that would then hit that as the as it closed but there's enough for a load of beer in there i'm sure at some point i will calculate how many cans of beer i can fit in my fridge okay so the fridge has a switch off voltage of 10.4 volts on the 12 volt system because it can be used on the 24 volt system as well but 10.4 volts the fridge will say, oh, your battery is extremely low. I'm going to switch off to prevent any more damage to your battery. And it will come back on once your battery, in this case, my ADM leisure batteries, get to 11.7 volts. So it goes off at 10.4, it comes back at 11.7. The temperature of this fridge or cooler is between minus two degrees centigrade and plus 12 degrees centigrade, depending on where I turn that little dial inside. The capacity is 20 liters. Ambient temperature that it likes to work at is between 16 degrees C and 32 degrees C. So in the past, I've made do with just a cool box and added ice to it. This time I really wanted a fridge. I'm gonna be living in this full time. It's nice to have certain things cold, especially a beer in the summer, but also I do like cheese. It's nice to have butter or margarine that's cold and a few other snacks. I don't normally have any milk anyway, or if I do, I buy it in powdered form. But having a fridge that can fit in a nice convenient space underneath the bed is um, a godsend. They are expensive, links in the description below. But this style fridge is the best, these little um cool boxes electric cool boxes you get are terrible uh for the amount of power that they will use now this is still going to use quite a fair bit of power but it is the most efficient on the market today and i believe to maintain temperature that they only need to run approximately 20 minutes in every hour so that means that the fridge compressor only needs to run one third of the day which makes a huge energy saving. Let's get back to the tests. I'm just timing how long the compressor kicks in for and then how long it, it's off before it kicks in again. So I thought I'd do a non-scientific test, a quick test of the compressor on the fridge. Now there's lots of factors like ambient temperature, the temperature of items and how many items you've got in your fridge, 
uh, how new the unit is and I did let this unit get down to operating temperature for a while first before I started the first of these tests. So lap one and three are the times that the compressor was on for. So first time it round it was on for 7 minutes 57 seconds. Then it was off for 15 minutes 20. Then it came on for 6 minutes 17. Then it was off for 16 minutes 42. And it's come on again in the last couple of minutes. We can work out a quick calculation of how much it's using. Now I've added those numbers up and essentially it's on for 14 minutes and 14 seconds and off for 32 minutes and 2 seconds. So if it's on for 14 minutes out of every 46 minutes, we know it's on 0.3 of the time. So 30% of the time the compressor is on. And this goes to the figures I've read about this unit that is on a third of the time. 0.33 would be a third. We've got 0.30, it's a brand new efficient unit. Okay, so 0.3. We know it draws 3 amps. So in a complete day, 3 amps times 24 hours would mean the complete amp hour drawage off your batteries would be 72 hours but we know that the compressor only runs 0.3 of the time so times 0.3 equals it will therefore use 21 amps off your battery during the day uh during a 24 hour period which is extremely low and in a moment i will compare that to a peltier style fridge cool box and how much that will use Let's look at the Halfords 24 litre electric cool box. It's similar in size to my fridge, it's 4 litres more, it's a 12 volt fridge. And if we look down, it does warming as well, but if we look down, wattage is 40 watts, which is roughly 3.5 times 12. And 3.5 amp is the draw now these run permanently the compressor doesn't kick off to keep it down to temperature that compressor runs for every minute in the hour 24 hours a day so let's look at what 3.5 amps means to your batteries and because it runs 24 hours a day it will take 84 amp hours off your batteries, which is four times less efficient. Now, if you're just going to a hookup campsite and you can pick up one of these cool boxes for 70 quid, and often you can get deals on these elsewhere, a lot less than 70 pounds, then yes, it's fine because you're not worrying about how much electricity you're using. But when you're off-grid, in your camper van, these things use four times the power. Let's just check what the ampage is on a smaller one. So there's a 14-litre one. Again, it's still using 3.5 amps. So it's exactly the same. Let's go for a bigger one. It's a different style. Let's have a look. Again, 3.5 amps from a 12 volt supply. This one can also be put into your main supply. So you could get it down to temperature on this type of thing, which is really good. But the wattage is 42 watts. Drawing amps is approximately 3.5 amps. And remember, these, the way these this type of cool box works is they run permanently. There's no compressor kicking in and kicking out. It just runs all the time it's on. So 24 hours a day. So four times more power used by one of these cool boxes. Now, that's why I invested about £500 in a good fridge. Please forgive the diesel heater noise. It's on high just to warm it up for a moment. At least there's no strong ticking noise because the pump is underneath anyway so i'm going to take the back off of this i've decided that i am going to locate this rear compressor unit so i'm hoping it's just a couple of these and um 
let's take it off and move it slightly. So I've removed the set screw from both sides. And now I've also released the power cable that was cable tied neatly to this. I'm now gonna release these two screws. There were a couple more tiny little screws. Where are they? Down the bottom. So that's now separate. I've now taken off a few extra cable ties. As you can see, that unit is completely separate and it's obviously got all the cabling, the uh, power cabling and the uh, refrigerant pipes. So it's now a case of moving this unit. That's going to move into that position. And I need to do that by carefully folding this pipe. And I am going to refer again quickly to the manual on the best practice for doing that. Right, so I've talked about airflow and I've decided to take the compressor, detach it from the rear of the cooling device, as Dometic like to call their, what I would call a fridge. And I've placed it where I said I was going to. So let me show you what I've done. Okay, so I've removed the compressor and I've screwed it in. That one's a bit weak, but it's screwed in nicely down the end there. So that's solid. And I've also screwed all four of these things into the ground. And if you notice, it looks a bit scrappy under there. You're not gonna see this particular compartment again. Um, I've also just put, screwed through the uh, a couple of tiles there just to even out the floor this is the sort of the surface i've got here just wanted it even so when i screwed it in it was nice and level and i've also put a couple of little scraps of wood in each corner so that holds it up at the front so i noticed when i started doing this if there was carpet there it didn't want to open now if i want to put some carpet down in winter I can just slot it underneath and the drawer will still open nice and comfortably so that's installed this was fairly easy to bend there was nothing in the instructions telling you how to do it so now I just need to make the cable connections as short as possible and put them back into the um, negative and the fuse box over there okay so I've just cut this piece off there so that's smooth so I can get this carpeted, that carpeted, and that carpeted. I'm gonna get that done today, no putting that off anymore. That's all in. As for the lower level shelf that will fit down inside there, the drop level shelf, we'll come back to that. But that's all in, that's all wired up. Once this is carpeted, I'm gonna do a proper job on fitting this switch. Obviously fridge draws three amps, approximately three amps, just over three amps need to check what fuse i actually need it's plugged into a 15 amp one at the moment but i need to check exactly what ampage fuse i should use come back to that there we go that's carpeted in just needs compressing a little bit got a little bit of glue there but that'll come off easy enough let's put that panel in place and see what it looks like there we go, I'm pretty happy with that. So there aren't many steps to install in the fridge. The first thing is to have an adequate place to install the fridge that's deep enough to take a fridge that has a non-removable compressor on the back. Mine luckily removes so that it can free up a bit more space. It needs to be firmly bolted in place and screwed down. And luckily my fridge come with four brackets to screw it to the floor and the compressor bit had holes pre-drilled in the metal work so that I could screw that to the battens of the base of the bed and hopefully that won't vibrate too much. I then needed to connect up the negative and positive cables, the positive going through a fuse box. 
I've actually installed an extra switch in the system. Even though there's a switch inside the fridge drawer, I wanted an additional one so that when it's not in use, I can just totally isolate it without having to get to the hard to access fuse box. And finally, ventilation. You need airflow. These fridges don't operate um, three way. There's no gas in this system. There's no 240 volt in this system. It's just a 12 volt fridge. It does not need a top and bottom vented to the outside um, grills that allow airflow to let the gas escape, um, which would be a serious safety thing if you've got a three way fridge and you didn't have that. This will have, my fridge will have four access points for airflow, which is adequate. And finally, it won't be in the sunshine when I park up on a beautiful sun, summer's day. Just make sure that your fridge isn't right in the doorway and the sun is on it because it won't be as efficient to work. That's how to install a 12 volt cooling device in a camper van. As always, thanks very much for watching. If you want to see more of my build videos and my travels in the future, don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate it.